overall development of our country. We look back at our engagement at the past one year and agree that we have had some significant win. The first milestone in our struggle was the campaign for a new national minimum wage of 30,000. The two chambers of the National Assembly, as all of us who are aware, have passed the law. President Muhammad Ibagari also have assented to the bill on the 18th of April 2019. There is no better May Day gift to Nigerian workers than the 30,000 national minimum wage. We commend the National Assembly and President Muhammad Buhari for ascending to our demand for an increased national minimum wage. We would therefore want to say that having signed the bill, we are aware that any law that is signed, it takes effect from the day the President assented to the bill. And therefore, we are hopeful that our minimum wage will take effect from the 18th of March, 2019. 2019 May Day celebration, celebrating the ILO at 100 years. Comrades, distinguished guests, your excellencies, our choice of the team for this year's May Day, another 100 years of struggle for jobs, dignity, and social justice in Nigeria is in consonance and in solidarity with the mood of the global working class movement in the celebration of our own global institution, the International Labour Organization which is the only agency of the United Nations with a tripartite structure representing workers, government, and the private sector employers. This year's May Day theme does not only grant us a window into the past century of excellence collaboration with the ILO, but it also offers us a panoramic view into the collective responsibility to building a working power for Nigerian workers and global workers advancing the campaign for decent work and promoting the cause of social justice in Nigeria, the, sub, the West African sub-region, and the entire global working class community. Like we said earlier, the international labor organization have come a very long way. 100 years. We are not just celebrating 100 years as mere number. We are celebrating 100 years of global impact and quality service to the working people of the world. We are celebrating 100 years of consolidation of the conventions of the founders of the ILO who are rising from the ashes of the First World War sought to build the consciousness that social justice is the only foundation for sustainable peace all around the world. So strong was the commitment of the ILO founding fathers that by the time the United Nations was birthed in 1946, the ILO was the first specialized international agency associated with the UN. We cannot ignore the social progress that has been made, especially since the 1944 ILO Philadelphia Declaration. The eight core conventions of the ILO, including the Convention of Freedom of Association and the right to organize collectively bargain, child and forced labor conventions, and the ILO Declaration on social justice for a fair globalization in 2000, and the successful launch and sustenance of the decent work agenda. Putting the 100 years of the ILO into perspective, the premier global labor institution can keep counting the many laurels on its cabinet. From an original membership of 44 countries, ILO now has a membership base of 187 member countries around the continent. The ILO, as the only tripartite agency of the United Nations, has over the years remained unflinchingly committed to its mandate of setting the standard for industrial relations, technical cooperation assistance, and developing countries a systemic approach to workers' education and manpower development since 1919. And therefore, as we celebrate this May Day, let all of this continue to resonate and continue to drive our process of engagement and the process of making sure that we're able to make progress. State of the nation, the economy. According to the 2019 African Economic Outlook report by the African Development Bank, Nigeria's economy is expected to grow at 2.3% this year. This will be an improvement on our country's GDP performance in 2017 and 2018. According to the National Bureau of Statistics, Nigeria's gross domestic product 
grew by 1.81% year on year in real terms in the third quarter of 2018. This seems slightly better than the growth of 1.17% achieved in the third quarter of 2017. So clearly we must continue to celebrate workers who are the creators of wealth, who are those that continue to drive the process of development. And therefore, this achievement can continue if we synergize between employers, workers, and government and continue to look at issues and challenges of development. And we're able to make sure that our economy is an economy that is not only rent-seeking, but is an economy that is actually anchored on clear issues of production without also ensuring that we continue to rely on importation. Inflation. Fellow workers and citizens, official data from the CBN indicated that inflation on all items had dropped from 11.44% in December 2018 to around 11.25% in March 2019. Yet, the unofficial reality showed that life is becoming increasingly associating today for average workers and citizens. The phenomenon hike in the price of petroleum metal spirits, PMS, otherwise known as fuel, or petrol in 2016, the devaluation of our Naira in the same year, an increase in the cost of electricity tariff in the past five years have sustained high inflation rates. The persistency of double-digit inflation and stagnant remuneration for workers have almost wiped off the purchasing power of Nigerian workers. The impact of the prevailing hyperinflation on our pensioners and workers is better imagined than experienced. Working families are unable to meet up with their basic cost of living, especially feeding and decent accommodation towards culminating living standards to an all-time low. The worst is that most Nigerians are not even enjoying utility service such as public power supply, potable water, public education, and health care, despite very high user access charges. In the absence of cushioning palliative, it appears that workers have become the sacrificial lamb on the slab of all that is not working in Nigeria. This is indeed very unfortunate, and workers should be seen as partners in progress. Unemployment. Comrades, one of the very important challenges in our system today is the issue of youth unemployment. And that is also associated currently with the issue of increase in social stability and in social vices, such as crimes that we have never seen before. Because the crime of kidnapping and the issue of cattle rustling and many of those crimes were before at their lowest ebb. But now, because of the combined effort of unemployment and the issue of widening inequality gap, those issues have remained challenged. And therefore, it would be in our own enlightened interest as our country to actually address the issue of youth unemployment. This can be addressed through industrialization because government alone cannot provide jobs that is being required by our teaming youths. Industrialization and job creation and decent job creation. The deindustrialization of Nigeria is already identified as the major reason that the current unemployment situation has continued to soar and poverty also ravaging our country. Industrialization is the key to delivering sustainable jobs and is crucial for the overall growth of our national economy. It is the foundation for good living standard. Unfortunately, the manufacturing capacity utilization in our country has fallen headlong over the years. Nigeria may be the largest economy in Africa, but the concentration or the contribution of manufacturing to our economic size is appealing. From 75% manufacturing capacity utilization in the 80s, Nigeria has fallen to 54.6%. Certainly, this is actually the centrality of our issue. And until we create enough environment suitable for industrialization actually to thrive, certainly we cannot be able to get out of this quagmire of job creation. Textile industry. There was a time when the textile industry was the highest provider of employment in Nigeria, second only to public service. The story of our textile industries today has been reduced to a tale of fears. From more than 175 textile factories in the late 80s, we can only boost of less than 25, not even working to full and optimal capacity. This greatest social strategy 
in the near, is the near total collapse of our textile industry. With the combined effect of our porous border, we are all matter of textile is coming into the shores of our country. Certainly there is no way this very important industry can compete favorably. Also the high cost of power, which I will address subsequently in this address. Electricity to power our potentials. Nigerians are not lazy people. In fact, Nigerian workers are the most productive around the world because we have seen many countries are coming to Nigeria to actually recruit our labor force. What have made economies around the world very thick is the human resource. It's actually the human potential. And therefore, it is important for us to realize the centrality of human resource to driving economies around the world. We all could all remember that on the 1st of November 2013, the federal government privatized the power generation and the distribution to address the following challenges. One, to end darkness by increasing generation, improve distribution facilities, and reduce governance financial burden on power. Why it is expected that the private investors will build more plants and improve distribution facilities, many years after, the situation has not changed. Jinkos and discos remain huge financial burden to federal government and ruthlessly exploiting Nigerian consumers. In 2015, we were told that the federal government bailed out the private investors in the power sector with a lifeline of 235 billion. It is also being proposed that the government is going to take over the burden of providing prepare meters from incompetent discos at extra cost. Consumers have endured the dilapidating effect of high tariff without a commensurate power. The discourse want tariff to be increased every six months. This we reject. Consumers are being tormented with crazy fraudulent bills that have no bearing with electricity consumed. It is sad that five years into the power privatization program, none of the key targets have been achieved. The federal government, Jenkos and Discos, and even the gas suppliers have continuously been locked up in an endless bug passing over the failure of the system. Government blame this cause for their abysmal supply of gas, and the discourse blame government for failure to implement tariff increase every six months. We are in a situation where no one wants to accept blame for the failure of the privatization of the power sector scheme. There is no doubt that the power sector privatization failed because incompetent investors we are actually engaged. It is sad that Nigeria Electricity Regulatory Commission appears soft on operators and hard on consumers. We call on the federal government, now that the tenure of the discourse is due for renewal, to review the entire privatization exercise and come up with the best approach to deal with this challenge that have defied all solution. The Ajakuta is still complex. For us also to develop industrially, there is the need for us to have the potential and be self-reliance on the issue of iron and steel. Because if we are to develop our roads, develop our railway system, certainly we cannot continue to depend on importation. And therefore, we want federal government to continue to give priority to the reviving of the Ajakuta steel complex and other steel mills. Mining sector and its potential. Comrades, many countries around the world have continued to wonder on the potentials of Nigeria particularly in every facet. God has endowed our country, naturally and otherwise. And therefore, one of the areas that we have not been able to actually make sure that we benefit from it and the potentials exhausted is the mining sector. We call on government to do everything possible to make sure that the sector is regulated and the potential is also utilized. The agri sector, while commending the federal government and a number of state governments for showing commitment to revamping the agro ally sector. A few weeks ago, Nigeria was rated as the largest producer of rice in Africa, with an annual rice turnover of 4 million metric tons, upstaging Egypt, which used to be Africa number one. We believe this is really what is expected. While commending the federal government, we believe that more can still be done. We, can, we call on government to focus on improving the agri value chain, especially agri agro ally processing. We must now make the critical transition from primary production to secondary and even tertiary level of production. It is all that is needed to, real, uh, to add real value to agri-product. 
By doing so, we will not only unlock huge potential for the creation of decent jobs, we will also be creating more wealth for our people, and certainly this is where to go. Yes. The wealth, great luck. Despite the effort of government to solving the perennial traffic gridlock in their Papa Wolf Aziz Lagos, the problem remains intractable. We call for the deployment of short to medium term measure to immediately alleviate the suffering of Nigeria, mostly transporters and our drivers that they are going through in this critical national economic artery. We, all, we are also alarmed at the report of extortion of innocent workers and users who ply their Papa Wharf Road by the tax force deployed at the Axis. We condemn such practice and urge relevant agencies to sum out this indiscipline. We also call on the stakeholders to work towards freeing this important corridor from all obstruction. Public governance institutions are building good governance. The public service is the new room of government. education sector and the health sector. Education is the cornerstone and the foundation for human capital development in any society. I will not end this address without making a case for the revitalization of our educational sector. We urge all our political leaders to take bold initiative and tackle the challenge of poor funding, decay in infrastructure and teaching aid in our public institutions. While commending the effort that has been made by Tetford, but we thought that certainly that is the foundation for a new Nigeria. That is the foundation for Nigeria to key into the digital economy. And that is the, Niger the foundation for Nigeria also to participate within the Committee of Nations. We cannot have substandard level of education and expect that our youth can compete favorably around the world. Health sector. Our public health that used to be referral center across the continent are now stone of their former glories and pride towards compelling our citizens to actually do what we call medical adventure to other countries. It is important for us to continue to make sure that this received priority because health is being said that is wealth. A healthy citizen is a wealthy citizen and therefore there is no way we can make progress if the health of our citizens is not being taken care of. When you look at the indices, health indices, which is also among the indices of development, maternal mortality, child infant mortality, and also the issue of uh, other indices. Clearly, Nigeria needs to do more in order for us to rank with other countries around the world. And therefore, the issue of harmony in the health sector is very critical. Over the years, lip service has been played to the issue of harmony, where one profession has been put against other. I think we should bring this to an end. And therefore, we call on a...